okay, let's find the inverse of f of x equals 3x plus 1. This can be done actually completely on paper without needing to graph. Um, the, that flipping this uh, transparent sheet is, is helpful to just see some of the picture. But let's, let's do this just purely from an algebra, from a, from a notational standpoint. First, it, it's convenient to just, first of all, instead of writing an f of x, just to write a y instead. We've seen that happen a lot. But now what, would, what I'd like to do is switch all the x's and y's. Swap all of the x's and y's. That, that same action that we saw uh, this way of doing this kind of thing, switching the x's and y's geometrically, we are now just going to do this on paper. Everywhere there's an x, write a y instead. Everywhere there was a y, write an x instead. So y equals 3x plus 1 becomes x equals 3y plus 1. Now what we need to do is solve for y. So to solve for y here, subtract 1 on both sides and then divide both sides by 3. I prefer switching the two sides of the equation to have y is equal to x minus 1 over 3. And so the inverse function is f inverse of x is equal to x minus 1 over 3. Let's try another example. Let's find the inverse of f of x equals x to the fifth plus 2. Again, it's convenient to just first change that f of x into a y. Now we need to swap all the x's and y's so that y equals x to the fifth plus 2 becomes x equals y to the fifth plus 2. Now solve for y. Subtract 2 on both sides, fifth root both sides. I like to swap the two sides of the equation. The inverse function here is f inverse of x is equal to the fifth root of x minus 2. Now in uh, the earlier example we saw, we had the given function f of x equals 3x plus 1, and the inverse function that we computed was f inverse of x equals x minus 1 all over 3. Now let's just try composing these. So f of f inverse of x. First I'll replace the f inverse in the middle with x minus 1 all over 3. So we have f of x minus 1 over 3. Now apply the good standard function notation here. So we're going to feed in x minus 1 all over 3 as the input into f, which is defined up at the top as f of its input is 3 times input plus 1. And we're going to get here 3 times x minus 1 over 3, close parentheses, plus 1. We can cancel the, the 3 on top and bottom. There's a factor of 3 on top, a factor of 3 on bottom. We're left with x minus 1, oh, still with this plus 1. And then we can actually drop the parentheses and minus 1 plus 1 simplifies to 0. We're just left with x. In summary, what we have is that f of f inverse of x is equal to x. It actually turns out you can show, and you should show, try it on your own, that f inverse of f of x is also equal to x. And while we're seeing it just in this example, this happens in general. That is, when you take f and you take the inverse function, f inverse, you take either th those two functions, and when you compose in either order, so f of f inverse of x or f inverse of f of x, these undo each other. You just get back x. So there's this theorem on inverse functions. Um, just to avoid using the f inverse language, let's just stick in a... Um, a function that's called g. So if f and g are inverse functions, then when you compose, f of g of x is equal to x as well as g of f of x is equal to x.